For the last few months, I've been building this giant RC aeroplane equipped with a working ejection seat. I've already made a video about building the ejection seat itself, but now it's time to progress towards getting it installed in an aircraft and testing it in the air. I'm actually working with the real-life ejection seat company Martin Baker to bring you this video, so thanks very much to them for sponsoring this project and more about them later on. The aircraft I chose to build is based on the Gloucester Meteor jets that Martin Baker fly to test new ejection seats. I started building the large plane using foam board cut on a laser cutter. These parts were folded and glued together to make up the fuselage, tail and wings. This is similar to how I built my last large aeroplane, the Lancaster Dam Buster that I flew with Tom Stanton which dropped a bouncing projectile on a lake. My main headache with choosing to build a large model of the Gloucester Meteor is with the wing spar and engines. This is because the two powerful 90mm fans that I chose to propel this aircraft are built right into the wings. This meant I had to design a strong spar that would go around the engines instead of going through the intake or exhaust. I wanted to make the wing as tough as possible so that the plane would survive a belly landing without the engines being smashed to pieces. Inevitably, I ended up using lots of plywood and this this resulted in the wing being quite heavy. I now realised, due to the increased weight, that I absolutely needed to use landing gear on this aircraft. The Lancaster didn't need to use wheels as it was a far lighter and simpler aircraft. Most of the time it landed just fine in a sort of crash landing. It was also the case that we didn't have a proper runway to take off and land on. The Meteor, on the other hand, will have one, as I'll be taking it down to Martin Baker's airfield for the big test. I therefore built a sturdy retractable undercarriage using servoless retracts and assembled some landing legs with big squishy rubber tyres. I finished up the wings by gluing the foam panels to the outer wing spars and joined the whole thing up to the fuselage. Next I wired everything up and gave the landing gear a test. Very smooth. It's at this point in a build that you start to get excited for what's to come. Now, for the main attraction, the cockpit and ejection seat. The seat uses four A-sized rocket motors, which I found gave just the right amount of delta V to kick the seat up and out of the plane. Ooh. I've bought quite a few of these motors for these tests, so I should have enough to be getting on with. A big thanks to my Patreons for helping me with this, by the way. I can't make these videos without their support. There is a link below if you want to join them in helping me to make my videos. Each motor is lit with an electronic igniter. These are activated using a channel on my radio via a brushed ESC and a small battery. In the cockpit are two launch rails that help to guide the seat from the aeroplane. I was confident that the first test from the cockpit would be as flawless as the previous launch on the test pad. I took the plane outside for the first time, got it set up and then drove it around to test out the landing gear. Time for a little taxi test. Yeah, seems pretty manoeuvrable even without the uh, steerable tail wheel, probably because of the, thr the uh, differential thrust and it's just pushing the nose around. Right, let's see how the ejection seat works. I connected up the battery, wished Action Man all the best, and then retreated to a right. safe distance. See you later, mate. But then, during the countdown, something went wrong. Doing some ejection. In five. So what happened? Well, the motors fired prematurely. This was due to an error with the programming of the RC transmitter, meaning that the motors ignited as soon as I flicked the arm switch. Secondly, I think dodgy wiring was to blame for the delayed response of some of the motors. Just prior to the test, I had struggled to get everything crammed into the cockpit around Action Man's legs, so I really needed to learn from this to streamline the setup, making it quicker, easier and less prone to error. A second attempt, a few days later, was made with a much improved igniter setup, with easy to check wiring fitted into shorter motors for more clearance in the cockpit. For this test, I just wanted to see a clean ejection with the seat clearing the cockpit. So let's see how that went. Five, four, three, two, one, eject.
Success! Action Man had just about survived his first rapid departure from the meteor, despite momentarily setting on fire. Although the cockpit is definitely in need of some more thermal protection, the test was quite successful. This is in spite of the fact that not all of the motors actually fired when I hit the big red eject button. Here you can see that this motor was still connected to its igniter as it left the aircraft. It's good to see that my seat actually has a high level of redundancy accidentally and can probably clear the tail in the air on just those three motors. Now I was very pleased when these experiments I've been playing around with caught the attention of the fantastic world-leading manufacturer and designer of ejection seats, Martin Baker. They invited me down to check out their facilities and see what they're all about. I feel nice and snug. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Apart from that. <laughs> if you're wanting to springboard yourself into a fulfilling engineering career, you might want to check them out too. Martin Baker offers an apprenticeship scheme, combining classroom study and on-the-job learning. For some, it can be a great alternative to university and, with Martin Baker, a solid foundation for a career. During the four-year scheme, you will study a nationally recognised mechanical engineering qualification, as well as having a hands-on approach to learning essential skills and processes. <laughs> a great benefit is that you earn while you learn, so you will also receive a competitive salary. Applications open between December and March each year to start the following September. Alternatively, if you are currently studying at university, Martin Baker offers a year in industry. If you'd like to be placed in one of Martin Baker's many engineering and manufacturing workplace opportunities, head over to the Martin Baker website. Links in the description. A massive thank you to Martin Baker for sponsoring this video and making the entire project possible. I'm looking forward to working with them again in the near future. Okay, quick update time. This project is taking a while to complete, so don't expect the next part of this project to be the next video on this channel. Um, I'm taking my time with it, and um, we should be taking this down to test at the Martin Baker facility uh, later on in the year. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. The next video will be some sort of other project. Um, I've got some in mind, so make sure you're subscribed to watch that. Thanks very much again to Martin Baker for sponsoring this project. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed working with them uh, to bring you this sort of content. So thanks again to my Patreons. And yeah, I will see you on the next one. Tally ho.